Oh, Apple, my crispy friend. Why must you cause me such mental turmoil and financial ruin? Your 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro was a thing of beauty. Great keyboard and screen, far better thermals and awesome performance. A huge return to form after subpar Macs in the years before. I bought one for over £3,000 as a long-term workhorse for video, music and photo work. And it was exactly what I'd been hoping for. But now, the new M1 Macs are out and the consensus is clear. Performance is amazing. Close to or better than the 16 inch in many areas. Absurd power, incredible battery life and all at a much lower price. So today we discuss whether I should sell the 16 inch MacBook Pro and replace it with a cheaper M1 Mac. What are the key considerations that I'm gonna think about? And what do I recommend you bear in mind if you're thinking about switching from a similar position? Ready? Then let's go. Now, performance to price is the big appeal of the M1 Max to me. YouTube and tech sites are already filled with lots of benchmark comparisons, so we're not going to do that kind of deep dive. Plus, I don't have an M1 Mac yet. The whole point of this video is going over the thought process around whether it makes sense to get one. So instead, we will cover a quick summary of key benchmarks and pull out the relevant takeaways. My Mac has the highest possible CPU configuration, an Intel Core i9 2.4 GHz processor, the highest possible processor available on a portable Mac, and still one of the most competitive processors at the top of the portable market. What? I'm not overcompensating. You're overcompensating. In Geekbench, the 16-inch gets a great single core score of around 1100, but the M1 smokes it at around 1700. Multi-core for the 16-inch is around 6,900, but incredibly, the M1 retains the advantage, scoring around 7,300. Cinebench, the other most common CPU benchmark, again shows the M1 as the best single-core performing Mac ever. This time, the 16-inch wins out on multi-core power, but only by a fairly modest margin, and this is the theme that I want to highlight. These M1 machines at around 1,000 to 1,500 pounds or dollars are competing neck and neck with the best available option on a machine two to three times their price. Wow. How about graphics? I hear you ask, surely. The 16 inch has the advantage here given that it has a dedicated GPU. And you are right. The 16 inch does have the advantage on graphics. The base GPU of the 16 inch is the AMD 5300M, which does beat out the graphics power of the M1 chip, but by a relatively modest 11%. If you upgrade to the 5500M option in the 16 inch, which is what I have, that gap opens to around 32%. And for the princely sum of 800 pounds, you can even go to the AMD 5600M, where you're gonna get nearly double the performance of the M1, around an 87% advantage. So if you really need that graphics power and dedicated video memory you get with the mid and high end 16 inch options, these first M1 Max might not be a good fit for you. But the M1 being so competitive with a dedicated GPU like the 5300M is both impressive and it may mean it is good enough for you if you have workloads that don't rely on lots and lots of really high level sustained graphics processing power. So is an M1 MacBook Pro the best performing portable Mac option available? No, not quite in all areas, notably in graphics, but it either beats or closely competes with the 16 inch. Is an M1 MacBook Pro the best value for the power you get? Yes, and it's absolutely no contest. Pound for pound, the M1 MacBook Pro destroys its competition. Another consensus with the new M1 MacBooks has been around how quiet and cool they run. Not as cool as I run, but still appealing when you're used to a 16 inch MacBook Pro that gets warm to the touch and hits 99 degrees Celsius internally when under heavy load. That cooler running also correlates to better power efficiency. Even under heavy load, the M1 has been shown to use around 15 watts of power. Contrast that with the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which can burn close to or even above 100 watts if you fully load the CPU and the GPU. Not only is that a huge win for battery life on the M1, but long term a win for your energy bills as well for similar amounts of performance. Plus, every test I've seen has pointed out that the M1 Max have basically inaudible fans. By contrast, the 16 inch gets noticeably loud. If you're like me and you ever record vocals or sound folio with your machine, then that is a small but real advantage. But how about price? Here, there is a huge divide. The 16-inch MacBook Pro starts at £2,400 or dollars. 
If you wanted to match the spec that I have with the 2.4 gig i9 processor, the 8 gig 5500M graphics, 32 gigs of RAM, and a 512 gig SSD, then that will run you to 3,300 pounds or dollars. Let's take that 3,300 number. Now for that price, you could pick up an M1 MacBook Pro, a nice external monitor, a Thunderbolt 3 dock, a whole bunch of fast external SSDs, and still have enough money left to pick up an M1 Mac Mini. So even in the areas where the 16 inch wins out, split between two M1 machines, I suspect you'd be getting the same workload done even faster. However, like a drawing of Harley Quinn, that is pretty crazy, but just an illustration. Remember, if you were to sell your 16 inch, you'd be taking a fairly significant loss on the value, and you're more likely to get something closer to 2000 than the 3300 number that we were talking about earlier. So you need to bear that in mind. However, those M1 Macs do have some drawbacks which make the picture less one-sided. One, Windows. You can't run it natively on the M1 Max, at least not for the foreseeable future. I use Bootcamp on the 16 inch to run Windows from an external SSD, which is handy especially for number 2. Gaming. Not likely your focus if you're buying a Mac, but combined with running Windows you can get some good performance on some decent quality recent games with the 16 inch, and you can boost that even further with drawback number 3. External graphics or eGPUs. Intel Macs like my 16 inch allow you to connect an eGPU and boost your graphics processing power. M1 Macs, so far at least, don't allow you to do that. This can be helpful for gaming, graphics intensive productivity work, and further boosts the graphics advantage you already have with the 16 inch. An eGPU also allows you to drive more external monitors, which gets us to number four, which is the fact that the M1 Macs are limited to supporting only one external display of up to 6K resolution, compared to my 16 inch, which can support two 6K monitors or four 4K monitors, or if you use an eGPU, even more monitors than that. Speaking of hardware limitations gets us to number 5. The M1 Max can only have up to 16 gigabytes of RAM compared to 32 or 64 gigs available on the 16 inch. Tests I've seen so far suggest the M1 Max are a bit like iPads and iPhones where they're very well optimized so you get more performance for less RAM than you would usually expect. But there are limits. If you know you have RAM intensive workloads, like for me setting up lots of orchestral samples in Logic Pro, then this limitation could be more significant. And while you're enjoying some orchestral tunes, you might notice number six. Speakers. The speakers on the 16 inch are best in class for laptops. And while the 13 inch is no slouch, it would definitely be a downgrade. Much like number seven, screen size. If you're using your MacBook as a laptop, then the larger screen of the 16 inch is noticeable and it's far better for photo or video editing and music production as well as gaming or content consumption. Eight, on the software side, it seems like apps which were written for Intel Macs are performing great on the M1 machines thanks to the Rosetta translation software, but there is a performance hit somewhere in the region of 20 to 40%, which will vary depending on the app in question. Still better than a lot of Macs and great for most users, but not quite as competitive with those upper end 16 inch options and potentially a downgrade if you really need that high end processing power you can get from the 16 inch. Speaking of software, number nine is bugs and incompatibility. If you use any apps or plugins which work right now, then definitely hold fire on moving to an M1 Mac. All the M1 Macs come with Mac OS 11 Big Sur pre installed and any major new version of an operating system usually causes some level of incompatibility. That's before we even think about the M1 specific bugs which are bound to occur, especially with more niche or unusual software. Before I give you my decision and conclusions, thank you so much for watching. If you end up finding this interesting or helpful, then please consider liking, subscribing and sharing. And of course, if you have thoughts or questions, let me know in the comments. Thank you. So knowing all of this, how do I decide whether to sell this 16 inch beast for a slender M1 Mac replacement? By considering a few key questions. One, do I have a genuine need? No, there is no area where my 16 inch is underperforming. Don't take that sentence out of context. And therefore, while it is exciting to have cool and new tech, it wouldn't make sense to sell a good machine at a loss to get something which only performs comparably and in a few areas not quite as well. Two, is this the right time to trade in a higher end Intel Mac for an Apple Silicon M1 machine? No, 
because of those teething issues around plug-in and software compatibility, plus the fact that we know more advanced Apple Silicon chips are coming. Those are more likely to be equivalent to the 16 inch and there are already rumors about a 12 core Apple Silicon chip, maybe called the M1X, which is likely to have crazy performance. I'm personally more excited for the second generation of those higher end Apple Silicon chips. By then, all the teething problems should be gone and all the big apps will be running natively so there's no Rosetta translation performance hit to take into account. If Apple can work the same engineering magic on those future higher end chips as they have on the M1, then they could end up as a galactic leap in performance over even an Intel Core i9 like the one I have here. Better to upgrade when there's a real noticeable performance gain. Are there advantages to trading now? Yes. Better battery life and power usage, quiet and cool operation for a similar level of performance, plus the M1 allows you to run the huge ecosystem of iOS apps on your Mac. Those are pretty compelling, but do those benefits overpower the drawbacks? No, not for me. The M1 Macs are super impressive, but they will only be improved on further. And while they're competitive in many areas with the 16 inch, they certainly don't represent a clear and obvious upgrade. So for that reason, I'm sticking with my 16 inch, at least for the time being. Which brings us to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and especially for making it all the way to the end. If you're in a similar position, then definitely let me know what you decide in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, then a like, subscribe or share would be incredible. Thank you so much. And until next time, Take it easy.